Jim went to University College London where he studied chemistry, but he was also studying economics under Hugh Dalton. Hugh Dalton was also a sitting member of parliament and like Winston Churchill and a number of others, he foresaw war with Germany at an early stage. Throughout the 1930s, Dalton had been looking at Germany and how they were building up economically and their resources. And as a result of that, when war was finally declared, Dalton became Churchill's Minister for Economic Warfare. Back in the 1930s, Jim worked at Porton Down, which was the UK's secret facility for research into chemical and biological weapons. Part of his role at Porton Down was to research the potential for chemical weapons used by the UK, but also the kind of weapons that could be used against the UK, and indeed how to defend against those. Throughout the 1930s, Jim travelled a lot throughout Europe and ended up in Germany for a lot of that time. Although he'd stopped being a student in 1930, he still travelled with groups of students staying in youth hostels, which actually meant that he could still observe what was going on in Germany and no doubt send a lot of that information back to the powers that be back in England. This was seen by Jim as a dark time because he could see the rise of Nazi Germany, the effect it had on the population. His main expertise was in rubber. Rubber was a vital component of building weapons of war. Rubber, of course, is made from latex, but latex needs to be imported because the rubber trees from which it's produced grows in other parts of the world for which the trade routes aren't controlled by Germany. Jim became particularly interested in the German development of synthetic rubber. Having access to synthetic rubber would then unleash the German ability to mass produce weapons of war. His photos show the synthetic rubber being used on airships, which had been produced by Germany in the mid 30s. They were later abandoned, but at the time, the Zeppelins would have had the ability to drop huge quantities of poison gas. In 1936, Jim was at the Olympic Games in Berlin, where he saw the African-American athlete Jesse Owens compete. Jesse Owens, the Buckeye bullet, stepped into his destined role as he streaked down the red cinder path in the 100-meter dash to win in the phenomenal time of 10 and 2 fifths seconds, breaking all existing world records. He described the deafening noise of the crowd cheering Hitler's appearance and chanting Zeke Heil, Zeke Heil, over and over again. He must have been terrified at the thought of being captured with all the photographs that he'd taken. The pictures of the Zeppelin factory would have clearly shown that he was more than just a student passing through Germany. Overwhelmed by the constant chanting in the stadium, Jim forced his way through the crowd and, and left. Suppressing his panic, he walked through the streets of Berlin. Years later in hospital bed, he described the extraordinary encounter that happened next. After a few minutes of walking through the city, his fears had receded, but then he stopped. Looking around, he realised he was the only person in the street. Other than the sound of a distant dog bark, everything was quiet. And then he heard the sound of a vehicle, and he turned to see an open-top car driving towards him. As the car drove past him, the occupant of the back seat turned and stared at him. As he locked eyes with Adolf Hitler, it was a look that would live with him for the rest of his life. He described it as a vision of pure evil. Jim was my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs>